I'm alive. Of course you aren't. Otherwise, I would not be here with you. Then I'm... Taking your first steps into eternity. Sybil, my old friend. Before I walk any further, I need to know what kind of life I led from eternity's point of view. If I was a good man. What do you think? Was I a bad man? Have I achieved anything real? Did people love me? How many enemies have I made in my days? Perhaps more importantly, did I do my duty? Perhaps having lost all points of reference, I can look again at the opportunities and fated accident made by her, which framed my material moments. A passing phase, dare I say, although allowing the slow and majestic pulse of Azerbaijan to flow through my body. Yes, through the reflections of being, I can see those weeks at the beginning, as well as the end. I can watch as I stand here, the 13th of March, 1995, when an armed insurrection aimed to bring me down. Look, look, over there. A special unit of interior troops led by Colonel Rovshan Javadov. From this vantage point, I can also see four days later, on 17th of March, when units of our Azerbaijani armed forces surrounded the insurgents in their camp to assault it. Yes, 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 they are killing Javadov a man who had forgotten the infirmity of our country, before I returned to restore it to full vigour in those early months of real independence. A country with failing infrastructures, no oil revenue to speak of, and a population suffering from far too many privations. If I'm honest, hardly anyone else would have agreed to take those poisoned reins of political power. But it was my duty. Look. I can even view my birth on 10th of May, 1923, and my death in 2003. Who was I, Sybil? Merely the third president of Azerbaijan? Well, this much is certain, I suppose. Gazing back between 1969 to 1982, I was the leader of Soviet Azerbaijan, more or less dominating political life. False ideas of duty were everything to me then. They were the crumbling capstone of my deflected purpose, even when I married Zarifer in 1948. Look, it is happening in front of my eyes. On October the 12th, 1955, during the birth of our daughter Seville, these delusions obsessed me, especially when we had our son, my own Ilham, in December 1961, I wanted a good future for him. For everyone. <laughs> if I don't look away, I will be able to see Zarifa dying of cancer again. Uh, I can feel my heart breaking. Of course, Ilham became my pride and joy. I love my daughter no less than him. But he was my heir, my future. My special gift to Azerbaijan. From where I am now, however, it all seems like yesterday, or maybe tomorrow. I know these things, Haydar. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Any hidden confessions before moving on? Do you have any regrets? Who doesn't have regrets? We are not spirits like you. We are fleshy men and women living inside the pressures and pains of the physical world around us. I recall suffering a heart attack once, long ago. The pain was unbelievable, but nothing compared to the reassertion of Soviet control in Baku. Oh, that numbing, political agony. After all, Black January witnessed the martyrdom of 137 innocent people, our own people, my kith, our kinsfolk, adding another unnecessary tragedy to the bleak storms already brewing over Nagorno-Karabakh. But you wore many faces when you were of Earth. 
We reincarnate every day, minute by year, second by season. At the start of each and every hour, you spirits construct us this way to satisfy your own ends. All of you worship evolution, the end result of things. Yet, humans are immediate. Look, there is innocent baby Hadar. Then, there is Hadar the cocky schoolboy. A different Hadar lives there, as a young man and student. Atop of this was a period when I held high rank in the Communist Party, rivaling Mikhail Gorbachev himself. Later, critics commented, I reinvented myself as a moderate nationalist. What did they know? Such men were deliberately blind to the continuous passion I felt for my culture, my friends, my family, and my country, for my beloved Azerbaijan, its history, its way of life. In us, after all, East meets West. Maybe only my home province of Nakivan, where I was an independent governor for a while, did they really see the man behind each of these expressions? Were you ambitious? Most men confuse aspiration with ambition. Should a man have no aim in his life? Surely, what matters is goodwill, the force behind his drive. Clearly, during Elchebe's one year in power, I continued to govern Nakivan without subordination to the official government in Baku. Unlike him, I believed in keeping public freedom as a facet of duty. This much is true. Proved furthermore, when the Popular Front's Minister of the Interior, Isgander Hamidov, attempted to forcibly overthrow me. But by this time, the people knew me. So unsurprisingly, he found himself thwarted by a local militia at the regional airport. Indeed, they spontaneously arose in my defence. For love of my people, I even negotiated a ceasefire agreement in Nakivan, with the then president of Armenia, Levanter Protrosian. Critics tend to forget this. Nevertheless, in this place without context, events replay themselves forever. I can watch once more 9th June 1993, when following a military coup in Banja, led by Colonel Suret Kusinov, my would-be rival, Abdulfaz Elchibe, was forced to invite me to Baku in order to mediate this crisis all culminating on 24th June, amidst the advancement of insurgent forces under Husinov's control in Elchibi, fleeing the city to return to his native village of Keleke. The conclusion was obvious. By August 1993, Elchibi was stripped of his presidency in a nationwide referendum. October 1993 saw me elected president. What was it Shakespeare said? Some have greatness thrust upon them. To my own understanding, I knew what he meant. Occasionally a man's freedom is found only through performing his duties. What about your failures and secret conceits? Do you realise the way someone surmounts an obstacle shows his or her true character? Time makes us, Sybil. It breaks each one of us too. I tried but failed to resolve the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, which by summer's end 1993 had resulted in the loss of 16% of Azerbaijan's rightful territory as well as 30,000 deaths. Nowadays, roaming refugees and displaced itinerants mark this beautiful region like a scar. As surgeons, we attempted a counter-offensive in December, but failed to regain control of Kalabajar, Fusili, and Kojavend, ending up with heavy losses. Every one of them injured me personally, making me an additional casualty. In May 1994, Azerbaijan entered into a fitful ceasefire, which continues to tempestuously hold. Nonetheless, this issue is an open wound for Azerbaijan, because Armenia still occupies Nagorno-Karabakh. Was it all worth it? Since you are now beyond favour, blame and grace, what type of footprint did you make on your world about becoming a statue in a town square? I did my duty. Admittedly, I was not perfect. How could I be? Can a man be made imperfect and then judged by the standards of perfection? On one hand, both I and my people may trace our proud ancestors through the trading cities of the Silk Road into antiquity. On the other hand, we are newborn, modern Azerbaijan itself merely twenty or so years old. 
Western powers may posture, along with darker influences from the East, wanting to judge us by standards it has taken them centuries to achieve. But we are a fresh idea. We will take the best from past experience and embrace futurity. We will show the nations around us how great human beings can become. I hardly spoke to the Emperor Claudius when he asked me a similar question to yours. Except, that is, for mentioning his body had housed a one-time ruler of the Roman Empire. Sometimes, however, it is fate's good fortune to meet with men like you. Rare men, Hader, that others detect to be distinct while finding themselves incapable of placing their fingers on the difference. Men who love to fight for something better, whose self-sacrifice makes the world a brighter place. When boys, you as a Bajanis, admire the fastest runner or the toughest wrestler, truly as a Bajanis love a winner and will not tolerate a loser. Above this, you understand teams. And a nation, if it is to survive, is a team. It lives, eats, sleeps and struggles as a team. Equally, as Abajanis know, all real heroes are neither lone warriors nor solitary storybook fighters. They are men who step up to history's measure, mindful of others. Those who shoulder the responsibilities of building a collective dream. The type of vision which remoulds their world into a warmer, lighter and happier sphere. You, Haydar, were such a dutiful man. <laughs>